In this video, I'm going to share with you my signal chain for vocal work using the Electro Voice RE20 microphone. Now, this one has an interesting history because this microphone is brand new to my locker, just acquired it. At the same time, this model is actually one of the first ever microphones I ever used way back in the day, starting out my broadcast career in the late 90s. Yeah, but this mic has been around since the late 60s. So more than 50 years, it's iconic. If you're wondering, don't they make it in black now? And why didn't you get that? Yes, they do. And no, I wanted the traditional, original beige color, whatever people call this. I love it, actually. I hear, pe I hear people on reviews talking about sounds great, looks awful. I'm here to go the opposite. I mean, it looks like a solid microphone, and it is. I appreciate this microphone way more now than I ever did when I was starting into broadcasting. I know it better. I know what it's more capable of, and I know how to process it. That's what I'm here to share with you. I also realize that this microphone is heavily compared with the Shure SM7B because they fall into, well, a similar price category, but they're also both broadcast dynamic microphones. And so oftentimes there's the choice of should I get this one or should I get that one? That's not what this video is all about, but I will tell you, processed, I actually now prefer this microphone. I think it provides a better sound, but I'll make an entirely separate video on that some other time. For right now, let's take a look at that signal chain. I should also tell you about this microphone that it is connected to a Triton Audio FET head providing about 28 dB of gain before it enters the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X interface. Uh, this microphone, like a lot of dynamics, a little more quiet, so I'm pumping up the signal before it gets to the UAD. That way I can process it uh, just a little bit better. I've, I have found that the inline preamp helps this microphone, also helps out the 7B when you plug it into the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. All right, in the Unison preamp here, my very first... Um, plug-in is the Solid State Logic 4000E channel strip. It does a lot of things. I'm not using all of the features, but I am boosting the gain up to about 20.1 dB. No compression here with this plug-in, but I am using just a little bit of expansion, and I, you can see the settings, but I want you to watch how 3 dB lights up when I stop talking. There it is. And you can hear that when I'm silent, the microphone is also pretty silent. This is not an extremely noisy mic. I feel like the 7B is a lot noisier um, when there is silence, but I'm just trying to tame all of that in between, trying to keep, you know, what's a pretty treated treated room acoustically. I'm trying to get the, the minimum noise floor when I'm not talking. And just to show you what it's like with expansion on and off. There you go. Not a whole lot of difference. All right, in terms of the filters with low and high cut, I'm cutting on the low side somewhere around 40. I mean, this mic itself is only capable of picking up, I think, 45 hertz on the low end. So I'm cutting around probably that point right there. On the high side, I'm rolling off at about 16,000. And that brings us into the EQ section here on the high frequency boost or high frequency area. I'm boosting at about 10K. To just about 3 or 4 dB. On the high mids, I'm actually using that as my de-essing. I know that my voice especially is around 6,500, where those S's get a little bit sharp. So I'm taking away almost 3 dB there on a pretty tight Q. In fact, a very tight Q. Then here on the low mids, I'm cutting out some boxiness at about the, mm, let's say, 250, 275 range. Again, relatively tight Q and I'm taking away about 3 dB. And then on the low frequency side, at 100 hertz, I'm boosting to about 1.5 dB. I should also mention here um, that I am on the bell curve on the low side, and with the high side, I'm also on the bell curve here. So no high or low shelves, just bell curves at the top and bottom. A little, actually no additional gain right there on the slider, a little bit of additional boost here on the output. All right, that brings us to the next plug-in. So I've gone, you know, um, I've gone EQ a little bit already. I'm going to go a little bit EQ here more before I get to the ultimate compression with the LA-2A. Uh, this is the 1073 Legacy plug-in left to right here. You can see I'm boosting with this plug-in just a little bit, the entire signal volume, and then it's got a high, a mid, and a low frequency. 
Uh, for high, it doesn't allow you to select. I believe it's about 14,000. It's that sparkle that I'm adding just about two dBs worth here. And then in the midsection, I'm cutting actually at 700 hertz to about 2 dB. Each one of those dots represents 2 dB. And then here on the low side at 60 hertz, I'm boosting to about, call it two and change. And that's pretty much it. There's also one other low cut here, which I am, I am utilizing at about 50 hertz. Again, just really trying to clean up all of the mud, all of the bottom end from this microphone that could exist by me boosting it other places. And then that brings me to the last plug in here, the LA-2A Gray. Absolutely love this one. Um, left to right, the gain is set just above 30, and the peak reduction is set just below 50. You can see under normal talking circumstances here, um, I'm not moving the needle a ton, but if I get really loud on it, you can clearly see uh, that that needle will move. Gain reduction is a little bit more. So I'm, I'm purposely trying to keep this thing between zero and negative three, and as you've seen so far, that's exactly where it is. All right, I'm going to give you a couple samples now. Here's everything fully wet and processed. And then, of course, in just a second, everything dry and completely clean. The RE20 Dynamic Cardioid Microphone is truly an industry standard, a firm favorite for broadcasting, podcasting, and sound engineering worldwide. Its popularity also extends into music production as a premium-grade instrument microphone. Its variable D design and heavy-duty internal pop filter excel for close-in voice work, while an internal element shock mount reduces vibration-induced noise. Now, here's the RE20, completely clean, going in at 24 dB into the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. The bass-boosting proximity effect common to most directional microphones when used close to the sound source is eliminated in the RE20. By controlling the effect of microphone proximity, the RE20 can be located very close to a sound source without a loss in clarity or definition, making the RE20 ideal for tight vocals and challenging instruments. It can be used inside bass drums, an acoustic guitar, and is found in voice booths and broadcasting studios everywhere. Final thoughts on this microphone, and I do have to admit that in the last couple years, I've totally turned into... A condenser guy. I really like the way that these microphones sound, especially in an acoustically treated home studio like I have here. It's just more preferable on my voice. But the way this RE20 sounds processed, I, I got to tell you, it's pretty darn close. And I, and I do think there is still a huge place for dynamic microphones. For example, rooms that just are less treated or for traveling situations. Uh, if you have to be mobile, I would definitely bring this over something like the U87. And last but not least, I think this is actually most important. If you're doing long-term listening to a vocal application, if it's an audiobook or a really long-form podcast, I do feel like sometimes the voice is a bit fatiguing on a condenser microphone because it's so sharp. It's cutting your ears for three hours on end, whereas listening to this dynamic microphone, every part is just a bit smoother. The highs, the lows, the mids, everything kind of is glued together better. And so that, that puts a microphone like this, the RE20, always in the conversation. I know it's been relevant for years. People say it's the radio mic, uh, and I do agree in North America. I've been to a lot of radio stations. You do see this one still. Uh, there's a reason for that, but... I, again, I think there's a huge reason why this microphone is very important to content creation moving forward.